Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. This is the Privacy and the Security Editions. These are recorded live Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you would like to catch the show live, check it out from there. Well, today we are following up on the Amazon. If you would remember, apparently I can't talk today. It has been that long of a day. Uh, Amazon was offering $10 in credit if you scanned your palm and put it up on their cloud. Well, some uh, senators were raising some questions about this, saying, you know, at least with Apple devices and Google and Samsung and all these types of things, your biometric data is allegedly staying on your phone on the device, Amazon's like, nope, we're going to take that palm print and put it way up into the cloudies. Yay! And um, that way you can use this, the same palm print at a variety of different places, not just on your device. Now, this is most terrifying because I cannot think of any service that leaks more data than AWS. Uh, hopefully, AWS knows how to secure data better than uh, your lowest bidding contractor in the Middle East. But uh, who knows? You never really know what's going on. But anyway, uh, some senators are indeed raising some questions about um, about that. Let me move this way a little bit. Get out of the way of the articles there. Um, and so they're raising some concerns and some questions about this, saying, "Do you guys really have the ability to store all this? What happens if it leaks?" And the U.S. senators would like to see these things answered by the 26th, but you never really know. Um, we like sending strongly worded letters to terrorists, so mm, who knows if that's going to happen or not. Eh, I don't know. Um, but anyway, moving on, a simple fix in software could limit location and data sharing. Uh, this is referring to the location data in phones when cell towers connect this this is the triangulation data that you have a very hard time getting around and um what they're saying here is that a simple software fix could limit this location data uh, but companies just don't care because they make too much money selling your location data so just a thought guys just a thought um these phone companies do have the ability but they don't care just let that seep in. Yeah, sure, can we? Yeah, yeah, but we we don't care. All right, so this is a uh, this could have gone in security and privacy. I decided to put it in privacy because it dealt with uh, collecting direct information from IoT cameras, baby monitors, DVRs, and things like that. So uh, Mandiant discloses a critical vulnerability affecting millions of IoT devices. So this is what's uses the Through Tech Kayla network. And so the vulnerabilities discovered by the team in 2020 would enable um, adversaries to remotely compromise victim IoT devices, resulting in the ability to listen to live audio, watch real-time video data, and compromise device credentials for further attacks based on exposed device functionality. Um, again, this is baby monitors and IoT cameras. So this is the ability to get in there and watch your baby. So little creepers could be in there watching your baby. If they have the microphone capabilities, hey, kiddo, come here, kiddo. Um, and until Apple finds you out and, you know, sends the police to you or something because, you know, yeah, watch Rob, Rob Braxman's breakdown on the, the CSAM stuff. Um, he's one of the few that got it right. A lot of people are going, well, they're just doing this in the iCloud. No, they're not. They, it's explicitly in their information. CSAM is on your device, not on the things in the cloud. It just only scans your device if your device is also synced to the cloud. Differences. Uh, very few people are getting that right. Uh, Braxton was one of them. Um, so this is a, a very similar thing. Um, only that's hackers instead of anything else. Well, um, the... Justice Department says that facial recognition helped end a 15-year manhunt. Now, this isn't some murderer. This isn't like the, the Golden State Killer or something. This is somebody who frauded about 20 people out of thousands of dollars. Well, I guess it says 20 people out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, Randy Levine, 54, of Boko Ranton, Florida, he fled. Uh, they took his passport. And when he was arrested, he fled, managed to get into Mexico, got a Mexican passport, and then he went on over to, I think it was Switzerland, um, Austria, excuse me, Austria. Went over to Austria 
and uh, tried to open an Austrian bank account utilizing the Mexican passport, but the facial recognition software flagged him and he was arrested and extradited back to the United States. So, you know, good to get the criminals off the street, but this is the type of stuff we need to start thinking about moving forward is all this facial recognition stuff. Who knows? Maybe I should just start wearing a uh, wearing a green screen mask and be a faceless head on the internet. Nah, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's too late for me. I don't know. Although, maybe I'll do that after I get that face left. <laughs> um, and on to our feature story uh, from The Intercept. Um, so when the most botched thing that the incompetent administration managed to pull off, I mean, it's really bad when the incompetent administration pulls off something that's so bad that places like CNN start going, what are you doing? Well, they left behind a whole lot of, um, a whole lot of equipment, including, you know, Apache helicopters and, uh, firearms and, uh, no AR-15s though. So you guys can be, can be, um, um, you know pleasantly uh pleased about that but you know we just gave them you know rocket launchers and airplanes and drones and stuff like that well i don't care about all that kind of stuff the one thing that we did give them though uh is as it relates to this channel is biometric devices so while the united states was, united states was over there we were scanning and creating giant biometric databases logging all the different people and what groups they were in basically it's the you know it's the the ibm helping out the uh mid-1940s german soldiers doing their databasing and whatever else and when we left and left everything behind one of the things that we left behind is all of this biometric data. So this group of people who is fairly hostile towards Western life and society now has access to this thing. And they've been looking at it. Oh, it says here you're a Christian. Um, it says here that you have um, some daughters. Uh, they're ours. Give them over. Um, they have been using this type of data. Now, this is exactly what Edward Snowden was talking about when he talked about turnkey government. Well, maybe it's slightly exactly what he's talking about. What he's talking about is even if you trust your government now to collect all of the data and store all of this data, and then what happens is if there's a regime shift and now the the government shifts and the new government has access to this old data, what are they going to do with it? This is an exact example, near perfect example. This wasn't a change in government as much as a governmental um, a governmental swap, but all of the resources were left in the ground. And while you may or may not been able to trust the United States and the allies with such data, I would argue probably not anyway, but at least they weren't using it to hunt down people and kill them. But this group, the term turnkey government happened. They got access to all of this data that was left behind by the previous government administration. They're now using it to their own twisted ends. This is exactly what Edward Snowden warned us about. This is the warning sign to all of us to be much more cautious about the information that we allow out there because we have the ability here to store and collect all this data in perpetuity and then a new government comes along just grabs it and runs with it and we're done we're done guys we're done and so with all of that um that's that's kind of the story here and i'm not really going to get into the rest of that you guys can watch the news for everything else that's going on we will get into is i do have affiliates and if you want to help support the channel uh purchasing an affiliate uh sometimes saves you money uh never costs you anymore and it does help support the channel today we are highlighting express vpn you can connect up to five different devices through your vpn accounts uh smartphones even a whole router over your whole network counts as a single device and then uh, you can come on over here, tlm.li forward slash EV. You can get uh, $99, gets you 12 months of a VPN. You can change your geo regions and uh, do a lot of other excellent things um, with this. Of course, don't be breaking laws with VPNs. Um, that's not cool. But nevertheless, you do have the ability here to uh, break out of geo locations, save yourself if you're at uh, coffee shops, and hide some ISPs from seeing what you're doing, and maybe help some of your uh, hide some of your search terms as well. With that, um, we'll head on over to our security section 
next. First up in security, T-Mobile says that uh, unauthorized access to its data occurred, but it's not clear if customer info was involved. I did read another article suggesting that customer info was actually captured, so I'm not sure if that was a separate breach or if that was an update on this breach. This is now four days old. Company said it could not confirm the size of the breach. Great. So following a uh, following a weekend report that servers had been breached, T-Mobile said Monday unauthorized access to some of its data occurred, had not yet determined whether personal customer data was involved. I think this was. I, I think I should have grabbed one of the, the later articles. I'm surprised this one's not updated, but I believe it was into the millions of uh, user accounts and customer data was actually um, was actually compromised. And so, yeah, just be warned if you're uh, a direct T-Mobile customer. Uh, there, This isn't the only time they're showing up in the news this week. Um, hospitals are hamstrung by ransomware and are now turning away patients. I forgot to turn on my security banner. My apologies. Um, so U.S. hospitals are now turning away patients and not, not because, oh, we're overrunning with the coop. No, 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 no. They're not overrunning with anything. They just can't process anybody because they haven't figured out how to call the schedule book anymore because the internet has made us all incompetent. So ransomware people are coming in, messing with the hospital stuff, and uh, now they're rerouting places. This is West Virginia and Ohio. They are canceling surgeries and diverting ambulances to other hospitals in the area and you know they're sitting down here saying um you know they are they, uh they say we continue to accept stem eye stroke trauma patients you know hopefully you get them in and you at least have a little bit of competency to figure out what to do with that um but um, the hospitals and clinics were the latest health facilities to be hamstrung by ransomware epidemic that has worsened over the past 36 months as it shuts down critical fuel pipelines, industrial scale, meat packing plants, and other infrastructure. Good thing, good thing that, that the Russians listened to our president who said, please don't hack these critical places. You may as well just hand them a list of things to say, would you guys please hack these things for us? We really, really have nothing better to do. And, and, and what are you expecting? Black hat hackers to be ethical? You have something in your head if you think that these hackers are going to be ethical. We're going to be ethical. and not. They're breaking the law for money. They're not going to be ethical. Can we leave behind this idea that black hat hackers are going to be ethical and just prepare ourselves for it? Like, you know, figure out how to manage your hospital without computer systems because, you know... Maybe you, you know, we've done it for years without. We'll, we'll just put it that way. Well, if you want to help support the channel, we do have a Patreon page. You can head on over there. That will support my different channels. I do have a new channel that uh, will be added to this. This is a hashtag van life channel. And uh, we will be doing some tech crossovers in that soon. And when I have time, I will update um, Patreon to reflect that. Um, O-W-I-C dot L-I forward slash van. If you want to see that channel, it is called Tux Traveler. So... Uh, with that, guys, Patreon will help support this channel and the other channels as well. So thanks for coming along, guys, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.